Tim, it's Brad Phillips. We've got the F4U Corsair, 800 millimeters from FMS. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. It is a showstopper. When you look close at it, everything has detail. Even the cockpit and canopy area has a cool pilot in it. Very detailed. We added this ugly detail here just so we can get our canopy off and then drop tanks remove. There are missiles that are included with the model, but I chose not to put the ordnance on because I didn't want them to be glued on. But I believe you can unscrew this and take the whole thing out, but then the blank would be white. So I didn't want to do that. And so guys, without further ado, we're gonna fly. It's very cold this morning. Camera crew has been gracious enough to let me get away with this. And here we go. This does come equipped with the Reflex V2. And so we're gonna go ahead and fly it with that, stabilized only, and then it also has auto leveling. So here goes nothing, guys. Final flight control, surface test, no flaps on this model, so it's gonna be kind of a speedy one. On 2S1300, here we go. Okay, that was 50% on the takeoff. We're gonna step into the shade ourselves. Pretty good flight characteristics, nothing too crazy to write home about. Need a little bit, a couple clicks of trim on the elevator. Not a powerhouse, definitely need to get into the throttle. That's what you were seeing on the takeoff. We're gonna fly in the bowl to stay in the light because this beautiful blue definitely makes it hard to see in the shade. As you can see, 2S leaves a little something to be desired on power, but it definitely has a nice scale appearance. And guys, these little 800 millimeters, I haven't done any trick trimming at all, but if you get into the power just right, you'll have pretty good experience. Sounds like the prop is just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit out of balance, or we're getting a little vibration there coming in down the runway, you good? Full speed pass, just to show you what's going on here. It's definitely not gonna be a powerhouse, kind of reminds me of the FMS 1700 millimeter F4U Corsair actually, which is ironic. Let's show you some rudder authority. Not terrible, guys. I thought that was gonna be our number one problem. And just for your information, I had to get into the throttle to not slap into the ground on that stall turn. Up and over. Kind of doing a lot of bull flying because that's where the sun is right now. Looks really cool up against the trees. Camera crew, you wanna, let's go out by the end of the driveway there and see if we can get a couple more passes. I'm gonna just kind of do figure eights out here for a minute. Our wind is chilly and it's calm. So we're just gonna come out here and see if we can catch some rays, try to get a couple closer shots. Guys, just remember if this plane kind of feels like it's getting away from you, just get into the throttle. Those drop tanks definitely add a little bit of extra drag. So if you want it to be a little less drag, you can take those off. We do have a small voltage alarm involved just a little two through three S voltage alarm. So it's even smaller than our crappy voltage alarm that we use other times. Okay, full loop this time into the power hard, just to make sure we don't smack the ground and it up and over our flagpole. Which by the way, if you guys have never asked about the flagpole, it's a fiberglass telescopic pole. And we added those for PPG. And they have been so nice for RC that someday we may end up just like having some links involved to get those things to you too, because they are really, really cool. And we actually have grown to really enjoy them. We have three of them on our property. So guys, fixed gear, but they look absolutely gorgeous. Only complaint with the fixed gear is that they have a large boxy gear door simulation on the front, which means lots of drag. And they look gorgeous. This thing flies fantastic. You just got to stay in the throttle a little bit. I'm about 65, 75% all the time. Camera crew, about two steps toward me, please. We're going to go in low. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, let's go out into the snow just in case I want to try to take a landing here. Okay, I'm going to try to stay out in front of us here. Like, not that. <laughs> okay, here we go. So as you can see, guys, you gotta be really Johnny on the spot. I'm between 80 and 90, maybe 100% throttle this whole flight. And what I don't like about that is planes that require full speed are not forgiving. So folks, if you're a new pilot, this F4U actually flies pretty easy for a more experienced pilot in my opinion. But I would definitely say that it is 
feeling very stable with reflex. Let's show you auto leveling. Here's auto leveling. Okay, so about 60, 70% throttle. Sticks, empty. Very good, very good performance. Up, down, up, okay. So just kind of giving you guys a shot. That blue sky is gonna make that plane disappear with focus, almost guaranteed. Look at your limitations on roll authority. Okay, and then out of that, and we're just back into the stabilized mode. Now, if you want, you can actually use a three position switch rather than a two. We use switch A, which is the gear switch. Let's see if we can take a touch and go. You good? Okay, don't move out into the runway. Okay, now rudder authority leaves a little bit to be desired. And as you can see, we're getting pushed just a little bit. And we did knock down the berms. We got cold enough weather that I could drive onto the actual shoulder and knock down the berms, which took out, was it the Bushmaster the other day? Okay, here's our timer. Haven't had any squawks from the uh, voltage alarm. But as you can see, we're just gonna have a little bit of a complex landing here just because of that little teeny bit of crosswind and this thing just needs the speed. So we're gonna see if we can, see if we can get it to line up here. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. Rock hard tires definitely don't help with that. I didn't set up flaperons on this because we have the reflex. And uh, I think I'm gonna get a little altitude. I'm just gonna try to bleed off some inertia. And here we go. So bleeding off inertia, about 30% power. You gotta stay in the power to land this thing, guys. Hate to break it to you. Okay, out of the power. Full up elevator, and we'll just see what we can do with it. Oh no, we lost one of the gear. Let's, let's pause and see what we got going on. Okay guys, we're just gonna have the camera crew hold this for just a second. And let's look at what the heck happened, guys. What? <laughs> it must be colder than I thought because this thing actually straight up sheared. That is incredible. And I don't think that was my fault. You can look at it. It looks like it was a weld. I mean, it wasn't a perfect landing either. But as you can see, it sheared that metal, uh, which is gonna be a bummer because it'll be tough to get that out. Now, let's just be honest though. Otherwise, beautiful plane didn't even get a scrape on there. That's a miracle. Didn't break the prop, so no big deal there. I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call this one good. We're gonna put a pin in it. And uh, I think this thing is just a gorgeous little plane. We'll have to talk to FMS and get an extra replacement gear on this one, or maybe we can plop one out from another plane. But absolutely gorgeous plane. Uh, if you do get one that breaks like this, you might be able to bend your own wire and stuff it in there just to get by, or you can just drop off the drop tanks and do some belly landings. But obviously we're not doing belly landings in the snow. That is a recipe for breaking your foam, especially when it's really cold like this. And I gotta say, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Disappointed about this, obviously, but that's such a minor issue. I'm sure they'll take care of us on it. But yeah, the F4U Corsair in eight, 800 millimeters. It's like a little baby plane and we love it because it flies so dang good. I don't like it because there's no flaps and I don't like it because the gear broke. But you know what, what are you gonna do? Sometimes these things happen. We're gonna let FMS come through and get us a replacement part. That's one of the beautiful things about working with FMS is that you can follow the link in the video description below. You can buy this for your very own. We'll show you the full radio setup. If you stay tuned, or actually when this is done, you'll see the links. We're gonna show our dual rates and expo setup because we forgot to put that into our unbox build radio setup. Our apologies, that's my fault. Uh, but it is following this flight. And then if you wanna watch the full exhaustive unbox build radio setup, you can see that published one minute before this flight. So definitely a cool plane. I like the way it flies. It's gonna be a little bit tough to land when it's extremely cold and your fingers are freezing because that's what's happening. We're below zero this morning. And definitely, I think that probably had an impact on the way this gear broke. But at the same time, if you grease that thing and you won't have that problem, if you're on geotextile fabric, you won't have that problem. And complaint number one of the year, hard tires. We need soft tires. FMS, I know you can do it. Come through for us. We're begging. Thanks for watching, guys. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. Support us and buy these things from the links. And if you don't buy this, you can go and find your replacement gear by following the link and then looking for the spare parts that are included just below. Okay, guys, you just saw uh, our flight and we're gonna put this right after that. Um, got inside, obviously, just dissecting this a little bit. You can see that thing really did break nasty. I think we must have had a defective part there because as you can see, it's very, very uh, ripped up. And so generally the, the reason that happens is because when it got folded, it had an impurity in the steel is what I'm guessing. I don't think I broke it. It's possible. I did have a less than perfect landing. I generally do. 
Um, I'm certainly not a perfect pilot and you guys should know that by now. Uh, but as you can see on the bottom, I can't believe we didn't even get hardly a scuff, a scuff here. I think that's just, yeah, it's not actually even a scuff. Usually when you have that, you'll get a big scrape, but this paint is super resilient. And as you can see, these drop tanks, they come right off. So it might not be a bad option, but I love those little details on the drop tanks. So anyway, um, the reason that we're talking again is because I wanted to show you not only A, how much we had used out of this Venom 2S 1300, but I wanted to show you what was left and then I want to show you how I loaded it. Yeah, 23%, that's about right, about four, uh, 4.2 volts per cell at the top end, and then we're down to about 3.76. That's a little bit lower than some might fly. Um, keeping in mind that it's been, you know, maybe three or four minutes since we walked in. And so what I did was I took this shelf liner that we would normally glue um, underneath the strap and then hold that, that in. But I took and folded that like this, and then I wrapped it around the side of the pack like that. Now there's a million ways to skin this particular cat. Um, but then as you can see, I also marked it here. And all I do is I just stuff that in there and then that gives me a little bit of retention, okay? So the battery doesn't come out, but it's not so hard I can't get it out. Also, it allows for air to get around there. Now I used to, back in the days, I used to get really aggressive with wrapping a lot of foam around my batteries. And I'm pretty sure that it caused them to heat up more than they needed to. Um, although on this occasion, because it's so dang cold outside, it might've actually been better to be warm. Uh, so that being said, really nice little plane. Um, the only thing I would have liked to do is I would have liked to get a little bit of trim into the elevator, but I didn't feel like it was bad. I just felt like it flew exceptionally good in auto leveling, which is unusual. Usually on uh, the Reflex V2, we found that the auto, oh, and this is the voltage alarm I was using. It's very light, but it's only, um, a uh, one, two, three. Oh, I guess that is 4S. So it's a two through 4S or one through 4S uh, voltage alarm. I misspoke outside. I said two through three, but I, this is what I meant. It's a smaller version of what we've used in the past. Um, those things are a dime a dozen. You can get it for dirt cheap, you know, like between three and $10 for a single, usually for 10, you can get two. So anyway, but this, this battery worked fine for it. I'm just, I just feel like the power will leave you wanting if you're a new, um, a lesser skilled pilot, I probably wouldn't go for this plane. Uh, not because it's a bad flying plane or because it's hard to fly. It's just that when you're on the edge of disaster by that close, especially you get into aerobatics, you're going to tend to want to lose your plane. Okay. And what's going to happen is you're going to go up, you're going to climb and you're like, Oh, it's doing really good. And then all of a sudden it's going to stall on you and you're not going to be sure what to do. And it's something that you, you know, of course you get that with, with a little bit more time and experience, but just to show you the difference here. You can see where that broke is right where it would have, uh, you know, heated. And it looks like they actually had a two bend process on this. If you look at that, that's a two bend process because there's a flat right there. Mm. So I don't know why they did that as a two bend, or maybe it's just the way they bent because this one here, maybe it's just flat because it stretched out the material. Anyway, pretty disappointed in that. But at the same time, it is a minor issue and we do run into minor issues and we try to be fair to these manufacturers. We do work with them. And the way we work with them is when you buy these beautiful planes uh, for yourself, then we earn small commissions on the purchase that you're making, provided you follow our links. And that is like actually how we fund our channel. We make uh, a little bit on ad revenue, uh, but that's really where the vast majority of the money comes from. And to be honest, let's see if we can get this one out. And so we always want to be forward, uh, forthright with you guys. We don't have any sponsorships or anything like that. It's just basically a commission that comes to us. Geez, that really broke. And so really at the end of the day, every once in a while the naysayers will think that we have been bought and paid for. Um, but I mean, just to give you an idea, I mean, all these companies are always sending us their, you know, shirts and, and hats and things like that. And, that. and that's fine. Like we're not gonna wear those. We aren't bought and owned by any one particular brand. We do have loyalty to certain brands though, because they are better planes. And we have had very good experience with FMS. I mean, generally we've had great experience and FMS makes a lot of the other planes that we review for the other manufacturers too. So at the end of the day, we wanna reward the companies that make good stuff. And we wanna to help to kind of maybe dissuade you from the companies that don't make good stuff. And so we do that in a gentle and hopefully nice way that says, hey, this is a great plane, buy it. And this one's maybe not such a good plane, so don't buy it, you know? So that's what we're trying to do here. And I don't wanna beat them up over that. That's such a fluke. What happened uh, a few weeks ago or a month ago when we had an SU-30 or SU-27 in this case, we had a linkage that ripped off. Again, that was another uh, point of failure that, that could have been caught by quality. 
uh, and it wasn't. And it could have been caught by me, but it wasn't. And I don't, I don't really know if I would have caught it. I mean, you would have had to really been yanking on it. But either way, the point is this. In the hobby of fixed wing aircraft, we need to stand behind these guys and try to help make it viable, okay? Uh, if we beat them up on every little thing, I mean, they're gonna take care of me on this little thing. It's not gonna cost them much to ship that out. They'll probably lose all the profit that they would have made on a plane like this, incidentally, to fix this. Because they're gonna have shipping involved, they're gonna have some parts that they have to get out. And, um, you know, everybody always assumes it's like, you know, it costs seven cents to make one of these things. It doesn't really, and, and the biggest expense to all these brands is to get them from China to here. And then once they're here, then they have to ship them with ground shipping. And if you've priced ground shipping lately, it's very expensive. So keep in mind, if your inclination over something, you know, like this little minor um, fail here, which is very heartbreaking if it's your only plane, I, I completely, I am with you. I've been there, I know what it's like. And yes, I'm gonna hold their feet to the fire, especially if it's my only plane. But just remember, let's try to do it in a way that is helping to benefit the whole community of RC because these guys can make money way easier doing way simpler products like cars and trucks. I mean, you got some bearings, you got some gears, you can pay anybody to put those things together. But when you start putting something like this together, you need a skilled artist to do it. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from the other RC secs out there, but I do wanna say that fixed wing is one of the more challenging ones to make business sense out of. So remember guys, Let's play it right. Let's win. Let's win together. Let's help these guys know that we love this product and we want more of it. And we don't want more of this. Obviously, that was a you know fluke. But we do like FMS. We think they're a good company and they're here to stay. So definitely worth investing with them. Love this plane. Really cool looking. Flies great. Uh, could use some features that I would prefer, like flaps, inboard flaps. Um, but again, you're going to have a very complicated flap on a small plane. Most manufacturers aren't going to spring for that. So if you're not going to do it right, don't do it all. Let me do it all. That's my take, seriously. LEDs, I would like to see LEDs on every single plane. And then, of course, obviously, breakage. We all know that. This is hard. Softer tires are, are something that are in the forte of FMS, especially because we know that they're manufacturing a lot of cars and trucks that have super supple tires. Now, I'm not asking for super supple tires, I'm just asking for better than that. And I think we can do it, and I think if you guys ask for it, we're gonna get it soon. So let's keep up the good work, and let's help support the companies that are doing good work for us in the hobby, and let's maybe start to shift our spending to the ones that are doing good, and not the ones that are doing so bad. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that's my two cents on it, guys. Uh, obviously, we work with so many different brands. None of us, they don't own us. None of them own us. So we're going to say what we want to say, and they've all been very supportive of that because it's one of the most important things we discussed before we dive in with the company. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a little bit extra clarity on how this all works. And then also stay tuned. We're going to show you the dual rates and expo on this particular plane. We had forgotten to set it, and incidentally, I stayed right in the middle mode, and that's always where I fly from like 99% of the time. The only time I don't fly in the middle mode is when I have a plane that has like maybe a little bit of a CG issue or it's got an, a little bit of an inherited, um, inherent instability because you have to fly it a little bit tail heavy because maybe you can't get the battery far enough forward or you don't want to ballast it. I don't tend to ballast with anything that's dead weight. I like to use the batteries for my ballast only, which tends to make a heavier plane in some cases, um, but it is why I end up having some dual rates and expo that come into play when you have a plane that's that's super pitch sensitive because the CG is back a little bit further. Um, and if you're new to the hobby, that means that generally your elevator is gonna be more um, effective, which means you're gonna be more pitchy. So anyway, so much more on Brian Phillips RC. We love sharing these details. We know that it's gonna help enrich your RC experience and we're doing it to help serve you guys in the community and we are winning too. So everybody wins when we work together and let's keep doing that. Stay tuned guys, so much more from Brian Phillips RC. We'll go over the dual rates next. YouTube, sorry we forgot to share the dual rates and expo setup on this little F4U Corsair. And so we're gonna do that right now. You've already seen it fly. So I'm just gonna go in here to dual rates and expo. And you can see these are set to nothing. So I'm just gonna turn that to switch F. I'm gonna set this to five. Then I'm gonna set the middle switch to 10. And then I'm gonna set the top switch to 20. And I'm gonna drop my rates on this setting down to 90. And so as you can see, we'll have half, the normal, and then double. 
Okay, so that's what we're gonna do on all three of these. We'll just set through those real quick. Set it to switch F. Turn the Expo to five. Turn the Expo to 10. And then turn the Expo to 20. And what this does is this will soften the sticks while we're flying. And so it helps kind of take the edge off of the controls. And we always start in the middle in case we got a little bit too much or a little bit too little. Whoops. Five, then 10. Sometimes we forget this in the unbox build radio setup. So our apologies on that if you guys were waiting for that part. I always like to show as it's flown at least. Okay guys, that was it. We really appreciate you watching this video and thanks for being part of our little community here on Brian Phillips RC. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell for notifications, like the videos, and then buy stuff from the links in the video description below, like this. And if you can't find the video you're looking for or the playlist you're looking for, you can also check out brianphillipsrc.com where we have everything laid out and we're getting them categorized right now. So hopefully that helps you find what you're looking for. Stay tuned, so much more from Brian Phillips RC.